I was living in Brooklyn and uh, life was good. Played baseball, made a lot of good friends, uh, went to school, learned how to ride a bike. Everything was good. It began a seven year uh, odyssey of running from doctor to doctor. As time went on, I started to drag my left foot, my left leg, my left arm went out until finally uh, I was diagnosed January 1987. I said, oh great, give me a pill, give me medication. But he said, there is no medication. That's when it dawned on me I'm stuck. When you go from varsity cross country and walking around the block, riding a bicycle, crossing the street, it's very, very difficult to absorb the fact that you can't do this anymore. As the uh, disorder progressed and emotion became more and more difficult, yes, there were times I didn't want to live. I had made two attempts in my life. First time with a gun. I took the gun out of the holster, pulled the hammer, put my finger on the trigger, and put the gun to my head. I'm just trying up enough strength to pull that trigger. And in my mind's eye, I'm looking at my daughter's first grade picture. And I said to myself, if you pull this trigger, you're not gonna kill yourself. You're gonna kill that kid. Do you wanna kill her? And so I put the gun down. I made a second attempt with sleeping pill. If I'm about to do that, my wife comes into the kitchen, sees what I'm doing. She came over to me, gave me a shove and a push. My walker went one way, the pills the other way, and I went the other way. Because of her, I'm still here today. And he said to me, anyone that will judge you as a person based upon the fact you get around with a walker is not a good judge of personality. You are still a person. You are still a human being. At that point, I said to myself, you know what, I'm still a husband, I'm still a father, I still have friends. I learned to adapt. I lost my ability to walk, but I've learned to manage this. I've learned to live with it. There will be days you want to jump out the window, there will be days the pain is exceptional, but you learn to manage it. And there are days that you just say to yourself, what am I doing here? There is a bigger purpose for you to be here. And again, ending your life is not the bigger purpose. The strength to move on in my life came from the individuals I met along the way. I started a uh, website called Let's Hear Your Story. I asked people along the way, how did you survive a bad time in your life? And uh, they would tell me. I was very, very angry at God. I would ask him, why are you doing this to me? I couldn't believe if God is so good, why is he doing this to me? So I, I did stop believing in God until I came to the realization that this is where God wants me. My thoughts went back to an incident that happened to me in Coney Island in 1962 when I was 10 years old. I was going to die. And the last thing I said, I said, God, please let somebody grab me. I didn't finish the me. I felt a hand slam on my wrist. A man pushed me out of the water. I have no idea what this man is, but it was his station in life to be in Coney, at Coney Island in the water with me at that instant. And I said to myself, that's why I'm here. That's why this happened. This is my station in life. I'm here to pay it forward. I'm here to pay it forward with this physical challenge. I do go to schools, I do speak to whoever, whoever I meet on the street, I tell people the same thing. Learn from the person next to you, pay it forward. And I always tell people, yeah, I, I want the miracle, I want the uh, thunder and lightning to hit me so I can get up and walk around again. But as I look around the true miracle that uh, took place in my life, is everyone around me. That makes such a big difference. When you understand what your, your station in life is, what you understand that the miracle, again, it's the people around you. That's the big miracle in my life. Everyone around me.